Hi, my name is Tal Bass, and today we're going to talk about what's new in SDK 12 with regards to Aviator. So uh, we're going to cover the uh, Aviator object model, which is something that's new. To uh, tell you a little bit about myself, I'm a developer uh, for SDK working on Aviator, and this is something that I wrote. So I'm pretty excited to show you what it can do. So first things first, uh, what is object model? That's a term that sometimes uh, confuses uh, some customers if they're not always familiar with it. Um, so basically, when we refer to object model, it is the API for SDK, so an application programming interface. Uh, so basically, if you want to uh, use MATLAB or Python or whatever other language you want uh, to sc script or automate SDK, that's what I'm talking about here. So uh, the name object model comes from component object model. Um, it is Microsoft's technology, and all you really need to know about it is that's where the name object model comes from. So just uh, to keep you from getting confused as to what object model means, when you, when you hear object model, it is the API for SDK. So what can you do with object model? Uh, well, you can automate SDK, so you can uh, have a scenario automatically uh, run, have some analysis automatically run with a script, you can extend the capabilities of, S of SDK. I like to think that it really multiplies what you can do with SDK by a factor of 10. Um, and, and I use the object model all the time uh, for any sort of analysis that I need to do. Um, you can integrate with other tools. You can customize, uh, have your own workflows. Uh, so there really is a lot you can do with the object model. It's not just some small API you know, where you can really only do a few basic things. Uh, all right, uh, where can you use the object model, or what can you use it with? Pretty much any programming language. If you're using a programming language, odds are you could use the object model with it. So MATLAB, Python, you can do PowerPoint, Excel, uh, .NET, so C Sharp, uh, Java, you name it. Um, and where can you go to find out more info about this? Uh, well, we have a whole web page, a whole help system dedicated to the object model uh, and to the API for SDK. Um, and it's shown right here. It is help.agi.com slash SDK dev kit. So go there for plenty of examples and documentations. We really work hard to document this really well so that our customers can use it. OK, so what is new? Uh, the a object model existed, but what's new is the Aviator object model. That means there is a new API for Aviator that is rich. It is fully blown. You can do a ton of things with it. And we're going to talk about some examples of what you can do with it today. Um, to kind of give you some backstory um, and give you some excitement about this, uh, a few years ago, I was uh, an engineer before I was a developer for AGI. Uh, and so what that meant was I worked with customers a lot, uh, often using Aviator. Uh, and s there are so many times where I said to myself, you know, I wish there was an option model so I can just script something and, and you know, m have this really cool analysis happen. You know. And sometimes if you want something done, you've got to do it yourself. So I went ahead and did it myself. So um, what we're going to talk about today, um, I'm not really going to show you much code. That would be boring for me and boring for you. Um, instead, I'm just going to show you some examples, show you the art of the possible, um, tell you why uh, you should care, and then also give you some uh, resources in terms of where you can go to get started. So what can you do with the object model? Well, you can automatically generate missions or routes. So if you're already familiar with Aviator, you know Aviator is a, is a pretty high fidelity tool where you can um, where you can simulate uh, aircraft routes, uh, missions, aircraft performance. Um, and so basically, you can have this automatically done. You can have a script that automatically has your uh, aircraft fly from one airport to another, does whatever in between, um, and it just runs with a push of a button. Um, you can configure items in the Aviator catalog. Um, that can mean your specific aircraft. So if you want to build a set of performance models for your aircraft uh, for different scenarios or for different use cases, you can do that automatically with a script. Um, 
or if you want to you know, build up a certain amount of waypoints automatically, that could be done as well. You could perform trait studies. And we're go I'm going to show you an example of each one of these today. Uh, so for example, a trait study, you could have an aircraft fly at various different altitudes and evaluate the trade-offs. Um, and you can add some kind of behavior, noise, randomness within the script itself. And we'll talk about that as well. All right. So before I dive into some examples, um, I'm just going to show you where you could go uh, to get started with this. So there are already examples installed with SDK 12. If you have SDK 12 installed on your machine, you already have it on your machine. So typically, there's a code samples folder. It's found at this file path right here. It's called code samples. And so if you unzip that, uh, there should be some examples of the AVR object model already set, and I'm going to go through those examples. Uh, as before, there's a whole programming help site. Uh, there's a lot of documentation for the new Aviator object model, um, some example uh, code snippets. Uh, so definitely go ahead there uh, for some more resources. Uh, and lastly, we do have some ITAR uh, examples. So if you have some of our ITAR products, uh, please call our support line, and we can uh, talk to you about getting those uh, examples to you. All right, so let's go to our first example here. So I'm going to have this scenario play, um, talk about what's happening here in this scenario, and I'm then going to talk about why you should care and how that relates to the aviator object model. So basically here we have a Hornet taken off from Virginia Beach and landing on an aircraft carrier. The Hornet flies to within 50 or 40 nautical miles uh, from the carrier and starts its martial pattern as it's going to land. Um, but as it's flying towards the uh, ship, there's a, a wingman uh, kind of coming in from the south, and they fly together in loose formation. Uh, so you'll see that in a moment here. So there it's flying towards the ship. The wingman comes in. They fly in loose formation. All right. So as it's flying towards the ship, uh, it enters a flight stack of about 10,000 feet, and its wingman uh, has a slightly different flight stack, and they're kind of station keeping uh, at slightly different altitudes. And we'll see that in a moment here. Uh, it holds the flight stack for, for a little while until, uh, it's, until the carrier is ready for the landing, and it exits the stack and begins the case one martial pattern. So we'll see how that looks like. So here it's holding a flight stack. We see the wingman is following it. And here it's going to exit the stack, begin the case one martial pattern. There it flies down one of the carrier, breaks into the landing pattern, and finally is recovered. All right, so why should you care? Well, this whole scenario was set up from a script, and a script that is already installed with SDK 12. So this is one of the scripts uh, in the code samples folder installed with SDK 12. And you can just open it up. Uh, I had run in MATLAB. Um, and I just click run on the script, and it generated this whole scenario. So why should you care? Well, basically, we have uh, some a, a bit of a complicated route here. It would uh, take a bit of time to set this up uh, where the Hornet uh, takes off, goes into the flight stack, has a wingman, um, then exits the flight stack, and lands on the carrier. And so if you have some sort of complicated uh, mission like this where 
the mission could be the same uh, every single day, maybe a change in time, maybe a slight change in location, you can instead write a script uh, with the click of a button, it'll just automatically generate this, that whole route and the whole scenario. And so that's one example of something you could do with the Aviator object model. Well, let's move on to our next example here. So here's another uh, installed example. So again, you can find this, uh, uh, this script already installed with SDK 12 in the code samples folder. And basically, we're going to have an aircraft take off uh, from JFK and fly to LAX. Uh, and we're going to vary the altitude. We're going to do uh, five or six different altitudes. And we're going to see how that affects the uh, fuel consumed and the time it takes to get there. So I'm going to go ahead and press play. We can see our aircraft take off and travel. And so I already ran this script. Here we have some, some graphs. And you know, very simply, we performed a trade study. Uh, and so what this script did is it created a new aircraft performance model. Uh, so what we care about is, let's say here, we're evaluating the performance of a jet airliner, you know, something like a 777. So this script uh, create a new aircraft performance model, set the uh, engine parameters so that it's using a high uh, bypass turbofan, um, and has it fly uh, to LAX and varies the altitude. And so here we can see the results of that. So obviously we have a uh, much lower fuel consumption at uh, certain altitudes, let's say at 40,000 feet, and it also changes our time travel. And so uh, whatever trait study you want to perform, you can use that script, uh, change whatever parameters that uh, you care about, and just hit go and get these results. All right, so let's move on to our third and last example. So here we have a uh, B-21 or any bomber uh, flying towards the target. Uh, here the target is uh, named Mischief Reef, no pun intended. So basically here we're going to fly. The uh, bomber is going to uh, drop some ordinances. Uh, let's say it's um, uh, new smart missiles uh, where they can fly in formation. And we're evaluating that sort of system. So here we can see the, uh, the missiles actually uh, coordinate with, with each other and fly in formation. And they're trying to uh, strike this mischief reef which actually has some surface-to-air missiles. So the uh, surface-to-air missiles will fire. Uh, there will be engagement. It will take down some of the missiles, uh, and we'll see what happens. So if you're evaluating this sort of system, uh, this is a great setup for you. So uh, why should you care, and what does this have to do with the aviator object model? Uh, basically, there's a script that does this all for you. Uh, it generates the uh, missile routes and the surface-to-air missile routes. Um, and so if you wanted to evaluate such a system and add some noise or randomness and see how that plays out, uh, you could do that with this script. Uh, so every time you run it, you can vary the amount of missiles that are dropped. You can uh, vary. Um, it will randomly uh, assign the position of the missiles uh, in terms of where they are in the formation. Um, and you can vary the amount of surface-to-air missiles, uh, see whether they're going to uh, hit the target or not. Uh, and that's the sort of analysis that you could do with the aviator object model. All right, and if you have our ITAR products, uh, feel free to reach out to our support line. And we can get these scripts uh, right to you and into your hands, and you can run this for yourself. All right, thank you so much for watching, and I hope that this has been useful.